Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live. And we're back here with Season 8, and I'm so excited to be with you tonight. And I'm sure Ashley is, too. Ashley, how super are you doing excited. over there? I am super excited. I've just been preparing my sheet of notes here for your questions, and I uh, already see some Comments coming in. Um, welcome from British Columbia, Ohio, Indiana, and all the other places that you guys are um, logging in from tonight. We've got a special show, a little bit of a different, uh, kind of a different spin or twist to the show this spin, season. So definitely we'll, a different spin. We'll be yeah. glad to uh, to fill you in in the next <laughs> few minutes. Yeah, and if you're new to getting sketchy, what this is is either myself or Ashley. We try to create a drawing for you inside of 45 minutes. And of course, there's instruction involved in that that pro that process as well. And uh, this is all meant to be fun. And the drawings are loose, of course, because we only have 45 minutes to complete them. Uh, but it should be a lot of fun. So uh, tonight, I'm actually doing the first drawing this season, and uh, then we'll switch back and forth. And we do a total of uh, 10 drawings. So I'll do five. Ashley will do five, and then we'll have an episode at the very end of this season where we recap and look back on things. Now. In seasons past, we have always chosen a motif, which is uh, a fancy word for theme, mm -hmm. and uh, each one of us has had our own theme. This season, we're doing something a little bit different. What we're doing this season is uh, we are introducing a couple of wheels, and uh, I'll An explain. element of chance. <laughs> I'll explain a little bit further in just a minute. But if you are watching this uh, live on YouTube, of course, you can uh, post comments and questions during tonight's broadcast, and we'll do our best to answer them and address them. Sometimes the chat box gets rolling really fast, especially here on uh, YouTube. So if you put your comment or question in all capital letters, that will help Ashley see it amongst all the other ones, and uh, we can address your questions and comments. Now, uh, as I mentioned last season or the previous seasons, we've, we've always done a motif. This season, however, we are incorporating something called the wheel. Uh, I don't know why I'm trying to make this sound dramatic. Like it's something <laughs> called a wheel. It, we just have a couple of spinny wheels, and uh, each wheel, uh, one wheel has subject matter, and the other wheel has media. And at the end of each broadcast, we will spin the wheel for the other person. So tonight, I will be spinning the wheel for Ashley, uh, revealing what he's going to be doing next week. So he'll he'll do one of the subjects that the wheel dictates, and one of the mediums that the wheel dictates. Now. Last week, we did the wheel for our live lesson, which is uh, part of our membership program. And uh, let, well, let's just take a look at what happened there. Ashley spun the wheel for me last week. And uh, the first spin was for the mediums. And you can see there, mixed media just barely mixed was media. the medium. So I will reveal the mixed media in just a minute. And then animals. So... I obviously this week have to do an image of an animal using mixed media. So this week what we're gonna be using is gouache and pastels. And I think I mentioned in my email that I was using colored pencils and gel pens. I have the gel pens out. I didn't even bring the colored pencils over here. I think I'm just gonna use the gouache and uh, the pastels on blue paper in just a minute. We'll get into the materials, uh, like I said, in just a minute. But if you're, you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, click on the notification bell so you're notified when we go live like this and when we post uh, new videos. Usually there's a video posted every week outside of getting sketchy. And um, if you want to take your drawing and painting skills to another level, of course, there is the membership program to check out, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media weekly live lessons. So after getting sketchy, we're going to be over at the virtualinstructor.com for an hour. And uh, those live lesson series, uh, they're, they're series. Uh, and uh, we broadcast for an hour each week. So we create a more complete drawing from start to finish instead of a quick sketch like we do here on Getting Sketchy. But there's also weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. So if you want to check out the membership program, there's a link in the description below. And you can also check out three free course videos, eBooks, which come from our program. Again, there's a link in the description below to check that out as well, if you want to check that out. But not yet, because we're getting ready to go into getting sketchy, and I'm excited, and I hope you are too. Ashley? Yeah, there's already a comment. Pat mentions on getting sketchy. When you spin the wheel, you don't win money. You win a ton of fun. <laughs> I like that. 
<laughs> I like that. And um, Ellie says, you're wearing matching t-shirts. Is that on purpose? It's not. It, they're really not matching t-shirts. They kind of the look like color it. family. They're both oranges. Yeah. And it, we don't coordinate what Orangey. we wear. Who coordinates what they, I, well, I guess people coordinate what they wear, but uh, it's not I, intentional. I guess I should, could have changed clothes, but I'm looking over here in the studio. I have an orange shirt that I keep here all the time to put on. Because, uh, you know, the virtual instructor, the colors are blue and orange. Right. So I try to keep so that theme going. We do tend to reach for orange and blue colored clothing for that reason. <laughs> but uh, I guess maybe we should coordinate so that only one of us is wearing orange at a time. Maybe we should have shirts that are like uniforms. Like no, the wardrobe just here and nope. we just pick up the wardrobe and right. get ready. That's not going to happen. Make up and wardrobe? No. Uh, all right. Let's, let's switch over to the main camera and get into this one. All right, Ooh. so uh, first of all, we've got our photo reference here on the left, and I'll get to that in just a minute, but if you want to go ahead and take a look at the photo reference or download a, a version of the photo re reference, you can. Uh, you can find it on the, the under the Community tab on the uh, YouTube uh, page here. Uh, so if you go to um, the YouTube channel and you look under the community tab you'll you'll find that photo reference there and you can use it to follow along it's wonderfully bright and colorful and mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun mark making with this one um this paper right here is the paper that i'm going to be working on this is canson me uh, pastel paper and i'm going to be using the smoother side of the paper now uh for our last live lesson series i did a jellyfish uh, but we used graphite we used powdered graphite as well and uh, here's a look at uh, the, the drawing that was completed for the last live lesson series. Um, the drawing won't fit under the camera here, right? I'm not going to zoom the camera out, but uh, you get an idea of, of kind of what we do here on the live lessons. But uh, I've, I enjoyed the jellyfish so much that when I was given the task of coming up with an animal to do, a mixed media piece. I came across this image and I was like, this is perfect for what I want to do um, with the mixed media. Now I'm going to be using gouache tonight and uh, Ashley is running the live lesson series that's going to follow after tonight's broadcast and he's painting with gouache. Now mm -hmm. gouache is opaque watercolor and I've actually already prepared a few colors here and I am using Windsor and Newton designers gouache for this. So the colors have somewhat interesting names. The red is spectrum red, but it's very similar to cadmium red. Yeah. Um, the yellow here is permanent yellow deep, but again, very similar to cadmium yellow. And then we've got, uh, let's see what blue, what do they call this blue here? I've turned it upside down. Uh, the blue is primary blue. I think that's, it's, does that look like cobalt blue to you? Uh, yeah, it lo actually looks like somewhere between cobalt and cerulean. Yeah. It looks somewhere in the middle. It is unusual. It's not the, it's not, it has an, they have an ultramarine option. Yeah, they have an ultramarine. It's That's actually the ultramarine. called ultramarine, yeah, which is nice. They actually have the official number on there. They can't get, <laughs> can't get rid of that, right? Um, and then the black is ivory black. That's pretty standard. And the white is, let's make sure it's titanium white. It should be. No, it's zinc white, actually. Uh, so I guess that would indicate maybe a little bit of transparency in there. But um, you don't have to use these same colors. You don't have to use the same brand of gouache. You don't even have to use gouache if you don't want to. But, uh, I do have to combine media, of course. That's following the it's rules. part of the challenge. Of so the um, that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm actually going to start with the gouache, and then I'm going to start applying the pastel. Now, I've got lots of different forms of pastel over here. I've got the uh, traditional stick pastel that probably a lot of you are familiar with. Maybe I should have picked a color that's a little bit more contrasting so there you can see it. Um, I'm using Rembrandt pastels for that. I also have a few new pastels over here. These are basically hard pastels. Uh, they're just a little bit harder than the soft pastels. And then I have a few pastel pencils over here as well. Uh, these are Carbothello pastel pencils. Again, you're free to use whatever you want. You don't even have to use the pastels at all. You could do the whole thing with gouache if you want, or you could do the whole thing with pastels or colored pencils or whatever. And you could use pen and ink if you want. Um, this probably would look pretty cool with colored gel pens, actually. Um, I'm just going to mm -hmm. reach around here and uh, put this this jellyfish drawing out of the way here. Alana says that the reference is gorgeous. Brent does art. Says, glad you're back, guys. We're glad to be back with you. And Ernest asked about a getting sketchy t-shirt. That's a good idea. Oh, that is a great yeah, idea. Boy, we could make something really sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a great idea. Thanks for that idea there. Whatever Matt draws tonight is going on the getting sketchy. <laughs> I don't know if that's a, great, a good idea. That's a great not. idea. Um, let me make sure I can pull up the timer. And, uh, you know, before we went live here, I didn't 
I didn't really check. And yeah, there, there, the timer is down there, but it is the wrong color. So uh, mm -hmm. let me change that real quick. This is obviously something that uh, I should have changed already, but uh, there we go. All right. So uh, let's see. Are you ready to start that? I don't think I'm ready to start okay. that. Let's make sure there's not any more questions. There was, yeah. Kitchen right. Cat asks, can I use my good watercolor brushes with gouache? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not using uh, real high-quality brushes tonight. I should point that out. I'm using just nylon brushes. Uh, but, yeah, you can use your, your high-dollar yeah, watercolor it's, it's brushes. It's the same binder, so it's going to wash completely out of your brushes. Right. Just like just like traditional watercolor. Yes, absolutely. Um, anything else before we get started? Um, let's see. Uh, we certainly need a virtual instructor t-shirt. I would buy one. That's okay, well, that's good to know. Well. Yeah. Okay, well, all, all pluses. All I've got some old ones, actually. T-shirts. I've got some really, some classic ones back when the logo was. Some retro, the retro uh, now. Fi yeah. 50s, yeah. Cool. Um, oh, yeah, I like I like. And actually, designs. when you're logging into the site, if you put in the wrong username or password, the old logo path pops up. that? Which is it's a little secret, little secret, little Easter egg. There. Some of you have probably come across that. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're ready to go. Uh, just real quick. Um, I'm going to try to place this jellyfish a little bit lower down on the pitcher plane. So then the top of the pitcher plane is maybe just off camera just a little bit. Maybe we can zoom mm -hmm. out just a little bit further. Let's see. There we, there go. we go. We can see it. Um, and just to make it a little bit more dynamic. And I'm also going to try to make sure I get some of these lines pulling up so it almost looks like the jellyfish is kind of like dropping yeah just to make it yeah. a little bit more interesting now i'm going to allow my marks to be really expressive and really deliberate too but the first thing we need to do is start with the gouache and we're going to get kind of a base application down i'm going to simplify what i see down into just fields of color shapes of color and uh then we'll take it from there and we'll see what happens here so uh 45 minutes is a very long time Let's go. So 45 minutes on the clock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to start by mixing up a little bit of the yellow and the red I have here. And I had, it would be great if I had this on, on camera here. But since we're using so many different mediums tonight, I don't have that. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the mix too. And I'm just going to start with this orange area that I see which I guess would be close to the head that of bold area in the middle. Yeah. And I'm just going to create a quick little shape here. I'm not going to get too worried about making it exactly perfect or anything, but making a sketch mm -hmm. and I'm trying to make this sketch look like a piece of art here. Shapes of color. Matt, did you tell us what size your paper was tonight? Um, I didn't. I think it is maybe eight and a half inches tall by six inches wide okay. somewhere so in there about eight and a half by six yeah that was for june and happy birthday to trevor lots of happy birthdays coming in now i wonder if if trevor is a is, is it really travel or you know we've got uh trevor burns yeah that's estelle <laughs> she has an alias now if i'm wrong about that but I'm, I think that's Estelle. I, I think that is who that is. Uh, you're outing her. And I bet, I, well, I think that's okay. I don't think she minds. <laughs> uh, we get a little bit of a right in here, maybe a little bit more red uh, so in some of the darker areas. Mm, yeah, there are some shadows in there. Yeah, and we'll be able to manipulate these shadows and things with the, with the pastel too. So. Now... When you were working on the previous jellyfish, we had learned the parts of the jellyfish. What did we say? What is the top? Was it the hood or the bell? Uh, I, I can't remember. I think now. you learned the parts of the jellyfish. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I just kind of, uh, you, you know, listened to what you said. Okay. And went well, along I've with clearly it. forgotten some of what I said, but I think it was the hood. I can't remember. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, all right. So I got a little bit more yes, white in there. And that's a little too much, so I'm going to bring in a little bit more yellow. And I, you can see how loose I'm being with the brush. I am just cr trying to get down some base colors. And that's going to be the story as I work down here. 
All right, let's go right underneath here. Mm -hmm. Pat yeah. says, if it's Estelle, happy birthday. And Trevor says, you are right, it is me, Estelle. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. All right, down underneath the hood. The hood. Uh, we got a or little bit bell. more orange. Pat says it's the bell. The bell, okay. Okay. And I'm trying to pull in just a little bit of pop of color here and there. We're going to make this jellyfish be expressive, if possible. Mm -hmm. Lighter values over here. And there's some darker values underneath, so I'm going to grab a little bit of black and mix that with the yellow and red. I should probably just call it orange. Now, if, for those of you that haven't used gouache before, um, you know, you, you may not be able to pick this up from the feed, but gouache has a pretty unique look to it. When it's dry, it, has, it, it is a matte look. It's not shiny like acrylic paint. Um, it's, it was originally used a lot as a designer sort of illustration medium because it photographed so well for things like uh, magazine ads um, decades ago. It started to fall out of favor a little bit when more designers and illustrators started using programs like Illustrator, you know, programs that were digital, that were really easy to reproduce well. Um, and, uh, and a lot of artists have picked up the, the uh, baton of gouache and are uh, carrying it into the future as a fine art medium as opposed to sort of a, a designer's and illustrator's medium. I love it. I think it's, in some ways, it's, it's got its own unique characteristics, um, but it also combines some of the characteristics of watercolor, acrylic, and oil painting. Some, it's kind of the best of all of those worlds. So it dries fast, so you can layer a lot and quickly, like with, um, with acrylic. Um, but what's on your palette is rewettable, just like regular watercolor. And so you don't lose colors that you've mixed. You can kind of save them, or they can carry over to your next... Um, to your next uh, painting session, just like oil paint that maybe stays wet for several days on a palette. So for those reasons, um, I really love uh, gouache as a fine artist medium. All right, I'm going to bring in a little bit of a lighter blue here. This is with the white mixed in. And start making some of these little streaky lines that come down here. And you're using a, the, a flat brush mm -hmm. for that, just using yep. it sideways and at the edge. Yeah. Just trying to kind of capture the rhythm of the yeah, the it's rhythm electric. of the uh, jellyfish you, here. Matt, this reminds me of light painting. Doesn't it look like a light painting? Oh, yeah, I can kind of see You know, the way those tentacles yeah. kind of zigzag around and they're so high contrast. Those white ones in the front, you know, very much look like they were made with a pin light. Now I'm mixing up a little bit of purple. So this is just the blue and the red. And need a lot of white with that here. I like how All you right. bounced around so far with your colors instead of sort of working on one part and then uh, moving on. Oh, I have no choice. Part. I have no <laughs> choice. I got to get down as much information as I possibly can. All right, I'm actually going to take uh, just a touch of yellow ochre and add this to oh. the mix too and mm -hmm. um, try to do the bottom part of that hood here. Just get a little information there for that. Keith Scholz has a question um, that may help a lot of us sort of understand some of the properties of this gouache if you haven't used gouache before. Keith Scholz asks, is gouache the same as poster paints I used in art classes at school? Um, yes and no. Um, gouache is a, is a super high quality paint version of a paint that, that kind of acts the same as poster paint. Poster paint can be a little bit thin. It's very cheap. You know, we use it in my own art class, um, but it is... It is wettable, um, you know, after it's dried on the palette. So in that way, it's the same. Um, but the gouache is a little heavier, a little thicker. Um, 
Poster paint, you can squeeze it out and just start using it. And with gouache, you have to go ahead and start adding a little bit of water to it um, to make it flow. So it's a little, it's, it's, it's more concentrated, but it, uh, it, it still, like the poster paint, um, it dries matte and it is uh, re-wettable on the palette after it dries. So you can think of poster paint as sort of like, um, think of latex paint and acrylic. Poster paint is to gouache as latex paint is to acrylic. They're, they're basically the same, but one's low quality and one's high quality. That's a very well explained definition there. Mm -hmm. Since we're getting some of the the hood on here, <laughs> um, and there are also a few little lighter areas out here too. Now, remember, this is again going to act as somewhat of, as a base coat here for our pastel applications, which are going to be layered on top. Yeah, that's right. We can't forget the pastels are going to come in here. Uh, Estelle asks, Matt, do I get a free t-shirt on my birthday? Uh, if I had the <laughs> shirts to give you, yes. Uh, but we just, is it your birthday today, Estelle? Today. Happy birthday. Hope you've had a good day. Hope everybody's had a good day, mm -hmm. even if it's not your birthday. Now I am trying to pick up patterns here and I'm trying to replicate the pattern instead of trying to replicate absolutely everything that I see. Mm -hmm. I, um, obviously I am not going to be able to do that. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some of the, the gouache up here where we have the top of the hood, basically create a little bit of an indication of the outside edge. And then I'm just going to take the brush and pull some of it down to kind of create a light, transparent look here. Now, are you doing that with just a wet brush? Well, it's not. It's there? almost dry, actually. Oh, okay, okay. I can hear it on the paper. Yeah. I can hear it scrubbing. And again, we'll we'll refine this with the pastel in just a minute. Maybe a little bit of some lighter blue streaks down here at the bottom before we wait on this paint to dry. <laughs> yeah, you guys skip around a little bit, I guess, when you're layering. Alana says trying to do this with watercolors a lot more mixing than i want disobedient colors yeah I'm and listening and just if you are doing this with watercolor uh, you'll probably want to be working on white paper mm -hmm. unless of course you're using some of that watercolor that's supposed to be used on um opaque paper that i've heard so much about yeah we but, did look that up yeah we did look that up but it kind of seems like gouache, you know. Right. I think that's what we determined. Now, all these little streaky things that come off, it's kind of, it's going to be hard to force myself to add all those, but <laughs> I'm going to need to. Ja H, or I'm sorry, Jan H says, since gouache dries matte, M-A-T-T, -T, you guys must remember to rehydrate. Yeah, we don't want matte to dry out over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Matt could dry out. I, I, actually, I don't think I'll, I'll dry out. No. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get a little bit of blue up in this hood. Teresa says she's going to try it with the liquid acrylic paints. I think that'll go well. Oh, Slippery Wheels giving us some props here. Thank you so much. Awesome. Slippery Wheels. Awesome. Thank you for that. I don't think I even knew that was possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a little bit of blue up there. 
and boy, we're about to get we're about to get crazy with this one. I'm just going to scrub a little bit here. All right, I'm just going to look here for a second, see if there's any other opportunity where I want to add a little bit of a base application of the squash here. Maybe a little bit of darker blue down here at the bottom. You know, some, some very subtle, low contrast colors back there. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yep, for sure. Um, we have a little bit of a lighter green. Let's see if we can... Eh. The yellow is too warm for that, so we'll have to rely on the pastels for that. Um, and you might be wondering, well, of course the yellow is too warm. It's a warm color. Well, this yellow is definitely leaning towards orange that I have on my palette. I'm not going to reach and grab the more lemony the, yellow. The lemon yellow is the cooler yellow. Right. Is that what it's called in the Windsor Newton? Uh, no, so it's, it's probably, probably called, called primary yellow. Primary, Let me see what yeah, it is. You're right, it's primary, it is. It's yeah. called primary yellow, but it's really like a lemon yellow. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're ready to start adding the pastels here, and I'm going to move my pencils over here so that they're a little easier to reach. And look at all that time we have. Boy, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> what are you going to do for next? No, there's plenty of mark Oh, there's to plenty to do here. Do. Um, now, Matt, let's, I got a question. Yeah. I want to get into the chat for a minute. Slippery Wheels had posted, you know, and said that uh, they had finished a portrait and posted it, posted that drawing in a forum, and now their account is on hold. Is that normal? Have you, have you heard anything like that before? In a forum, is it was it our forum? It doesn't say which forum. Oh, oh, I have no idea. I, I, I don't know if if the image you'll you'll have to if it. It could have to do with your subject, maybe. Yeah, or yeah, it could be the don't subject. Know who your person is or where the or, reference came. from. I mean, from. I have no idea. I'm just trying to figure out what would cause uh, an account to be, you know. You might want to talk to the. Um, the people that own the that own the forum, forum yeah. that run the forum. Trying to figure out what your infraction yeah. was or if it's a mistake. All right, so let's bring out the hood a little bit further. A little bit more of that yellowy color here, and of course the you know the pastels go right over the top of the gouache. Uh, Slippery Willis did put yeah on the site. So I'm oh okay. A virtual instructor. So. Um, well, then remind me if you posted. Um, if you post it, if you post an image really quick, or you if you post really quickly, uh, sometimes the system can, you know, think you're that you're you're spamming like the site. Multiple posts really yeah. quickly, I and see. so maybe uh, it's not because of the image. Yeah, send send me an email. Uh, use the contact form on the site. And send me an email, okay. and uh, then I can take care of that for you. I can lift whatever is going on there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for letting us know, Slippy Wheels. Um, and if you post a link or, or something like that, sometimes that will also um, set off some sort yeah, of Yeah, all that stuff is automated, yeah. so it's not purposeful. It's not like there's somebody sitting there going, oh, they just posted a portrait. Let's, let's shut them down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start bringing in this area still a little bit. A little bit wet. I'm going to start just bringing in colors right over the top, making deliberate marks. Some of these are going to be bolder marks with brighter colors. Some are going to be a little bit more subdued. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm also going to allow for some blending to happen here too, especially up here on this hood. So this is a white pastel now. And yeah, you were painting so fast in the first 15 minutes. I don't think I've ever seen you paint that fast before. Laying down that gouache. But you're right. You, we talked about this last week, and it was intended to be kind of a fast medium, wasn't it? It can, it, it can go fast. It can go fast, yeah. Uh, but That's not how I'm using it. No, and that's not how I typically use it either. 
it can it can be a really fast medium but it can also be one that where you you work a whole lot slower with it too so all right yeah, believe it or not there is quite a bit of variety here in the see that area is wet i gotta i gotta be patient I gotta be patient how oh, slippery wheels are going off here tonight <laughs> thank you for that All right, I think what I need to do here is let this area dry a little bit more and continue to work down here on the lower part. So let's add some more light blue down here. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, turns into kind of a minty green over here. We'll get some of that color down. This This guy right here looks like he is not to be messed with. But at the same time, it's so beautiful, isn't it? Look at all those tentacles. I mean, my gosh. This one's pretty wild. How can how can there be so many tentacles? It's I like, don't know. I mean, I have seen some jellyfish in, you know, in captivity where you can see their whole stretched out bodies and tentacles. And uh, they had a lot of tentacles, but this jellyfish really puts those to shame. Some of these go back out into the distance. So I'm just going to try to adjust the amount of pressure that I put on the pencil. Alana says, my watercolor is still wet. I think I need to redo this in just colored pencils. Yeah, the, the gouache does seem to dry faster than an, a, an area that's washed with regular watercolor because you have to use so much more water to get it to move. So I could see that going a little slower. Um. Trevor Burns asks, what brand of pastel pencils are you using? Uh, these are the Carbothello ones. Carbothello. Yeah. Brent Desart says, I was gifted a set of gouache paints and never touched them, thinking I should plan something. Definitely. Give them a go. See, yeah. see how you think they compare to the big three, you know, watercolor, acrylic, and oil paint. Yeah, gouache is one of those mediums that actually a lot of people just don't even know exists. Mm-hmm. Um, so, all right, let's we can add change that together. Yeah, definitely. Let's add some, uh, some marks with a stick pastel. This is a little bit lighter, yeah, but it's still, um, a lighter green, kind of a, a little bit of a bluish green. And there's just so many little marks back there that you can, looks electric. You can really uh, have some fun with things. All right, let's let's see. Uh, let's go to purple next. I want to add some purple marks down here. Some areas of purple that are showing through here. Edie has a question. Edie, I may be saying your name wrong again. I feel like I am. Edie asks, is pencil over gouache archival, please? Um, what type of pencil over gouache? Or, yeah, like the pastel pencil or like I, graphite? I'm not really sure but if it's archival gouache... as they would be on any other surface or media, I would I would I would think. Yeah, I'm I'm not you know, gouache is not permanent. Um because it can be reactivated. Yeah. And so, it's light fast. I mean, if you buy yeah. like a Winsor Newton brand, you're getting pigment in there. You know, it's going to be light fast, but it's like pastel in that it's delicate, more delicate than some other media. You don't want to get, you don't want to get it wet. You know, you can walk through light rain with an oil painting or a, an acrylic painting, but you don't want to do that with wash. But it is light, you know, it's as light fast as the quality of the paint that you would buy. I don't know if that answers your question. And just like other paints, um, there are sort of economy grade, student grade, um, hobbyist grade, artist grade, whatever, you know, however different uh, different brands sort of sort of build those. All right. Different lines of gouache. 
We've got some more green ones over here. And to make these marks, you know, I'm using a big old fat pastel stick, mm -hmm. but I'm using the, the edge of it. So that's allowing me to get um, some of these marks. And I can also take it and kind of roll the tip a little bit. There's just so much rhythm and movement in this subject here. It's really perfect for this kind of contrast on the paper. You know, we've got the, the dark paper and all right. Let's... You've done a good job preserving those little thin dark areas peeking through where the mark making is pretty thick. Yeah. Well, I still have to go over those not areas in the middle. Cover all of those. Margaret says, taking tentacles to a whole new level with the very uh, variables in your mark making. Hmm. That's right. It's all, you know, there's um, so many different uh, marks we can make with the same tool because um, our hands have such a wide variety of, of uh, movements they can make and then pressure changes. Matt's working on a pretty smooth side of the paper. So the paper's not doing a whole lot of, uh, you know, a whole lot there, but there are little bits of broken color where the light touch is kind of skipping across the paper a little bit. That's nice to see. Let's bring a little bit of blue in the head here. Let's see if this is the right similar color and, and at least enough of a similar color. There we go. I think that'll work. Then we'll do a little bit of blending up here. Let's do a little bit of blending. I know I'm I'm bouncing all over the place here, but yeah, I'm gonna use a blending stump to do so, but it's got junk on it, so I'll clean that off real fast. There we go. We'll do a little bit of soft blending here and see if we can make this area look transparent. We'll just pull some of that pastel down over the top just kind of make it a little cloudy around the edge of the orange yeah and then yeah. I'm gonna go back and add some highlights and a little bit of shadow there on the inside too so we'll grab a little bit of darker brown here now um, are we seeing the entire reference because the jellyfish is so much bigger in the reference uh, yes. Yeah, I like it, that you made it smaller and have more space in there. Yeah, I mentioned that at the beginning. Yeah. I, I I was going to try to I make knew a. You were bringing it down. Yeah, I didn't realize <laughs> you were going to just sort of increase the negative space a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm going to room for the tentacles too. Yeah, I'm going to bring some more of those tentacles up. Yeah. I, just you know, having the 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 jellyfish right in the middle, you know, it's it's kind of a, a boring composition, mm -hmm. I think. So, um, let's see here. I lost my train of thought. All right, blending. By <laughs> blending, I put those little dark areas down. Now I need to blend them a little bit, and then we'll pull out some highlights. Here, where's my white? Just trying to get a little bit more variety here. Yeah, I like that. And then if we want a little bit more control, of course, we use the pencil. I'm trying to keep my paper as clean as possible because it's real easy to smear the pastel, especially working on this side of the paper. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of avoid that as much as possible. All right, let's uh, let's go back in here. Matt, have you taken a look at art news lately? Like... Just just anything happening in the art world? Have you, are you familiar no, with not what really. happened to the... Uh, the Mona Lisa? No. 
because we weren't, you know, we haven't been on air for a while. And right. So, and this was a couple of weeks ago, I think. But um, I don't think you and I talked about it last week. It was uh, vandalized. Oh, was it? Yeah, vandalized. Somebody, and uh, it's kind of kind of funny. Of course, it's behind glass. Um, so I think somebody smeared ice cream or something like that all over it. Some sort of a dessert item. Oh, so it wasn't like it's not damaged permanently. It's damaged. Not hurt. Yeah. yeah, they tried. But uh, we're unsuccessful. Well, maybe they thought the Mona Lisa was just a little bit hungry. Just hungry. Yeah, just need some ice cream. He so, asks, what is the ultimate fate of the artworks you create for these live streams, please? We send them to a, uh, <laughs> to a farm. It's really nice. It's out in the country, and they have lots of space to run. No, not really. <laughs> Those were my dogs growing up. I'm sorry. Run, artwork, run. No, these, uh, my dad gave away all my dogs, by the way. It's, some, it's still a sore spot. I'm 45 years old. I still talk about all the dogs that uh, my he dad. He gave away your dogs? He, he, I was always giving away my dogs. So he would well, get one. Why would you get more dogs if they kept getting given, um, to given away? To try to do a better job taking care of them so my dad didn't give the next one away. So oh. anyway. Did he think you didn't do a good job? Taking you know, care of I would not do my chores or forget to feed him for a couple of times and uh, we give him away. So <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to talk to you guys about that. I need to save that for my psychologist. But uh, in any case, um, what does happen to our drawings after we do them? Well, some end up on a wall. You know, some of our faves end up on walls. Um, and then I also keep them in folders. And it's funny. I was looking at my folder of last season's artwork um, just today. You know, my down on the farm theme, and I'm beside myself because I cannot find my horse drawing, and it's my favorite one from last season. Oh, no. That's, that's the one that I wanted to, to display uh, specifically. So I was looking for it today. So some of them just kind of go into, the, into my archives of drawings and artwork. Um, Matt's probably end up some of his and his flat files. <laughs> <laughs> they pretty much all end up in the flat files. Flat uh, files and then some of them yeah. also end up on walls where they belong. Great question. Oh, Alana a says, darker value to in there. Edie, we've been trying to convince them to let us buy pieces or give them away in raffles or something, but they just pack them away. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, the raffle idea. That's you guys idea. really don't want these drawings, do you? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Maybe you do, but no. uh, that's not a bad they idea. They just maybe. pack them away. I like that. That's what I'm going to put on the <laughs> shirt. Getting sketchy. They just pack them away. So, <laughs> all right. I'm trying to add a little bit more pop of color here with the orange, um, and I'm also going to do the same thing with yellow. Just get a little bit more color in there. Just make it. Trying to make it a little bit more interesting. Now you got to remember, from our perspective, we're sort of making art, but we're also making a video. And so the video is available for everybody to see um, all the time. So the art isn't exactly packed away. It's been changed to video form right. for and, your enjoyment. Yeah, and another thing to think about is uh, when I'm making a, a, a video for a lesson, I know that there's going to be a lot of people that follow along with that lesson, and they're creating essentially copies of what I've created. Mm -hmm. So... That does take away a little bit from the originality of of what we create, I guess, in some weird way. In our own mind, we know there's there's others out there, and that's <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Uh, I, sure. you know, I that's the reason why we why we do this sure. is to help you to help you learn. I mean, that we're teachers, uh, so yeah, I don't I don't know. I guess. I guess we could do something a little bit more productive with the artwork when we're done, but maybe we'll brainstorm that, figure out a way. We'll make another wheel. <laughs> What's going to happen to this artwork? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's going in the... Raffle it, sell it, or pack it away. <laughs> it's going in the garbage disposal. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, well, I'm just saying there would there would have to be something on the wheel that would oh, be right. dramatic yeah uh and to, then you have to, to make record it us like tearing our own artwork in half yeah. and what our face looks you like. have to do it you do it. It. it do it you have to do it now all right let's bring some of these little tiny lines up here um and they these kind of get little curly ones back there they kind of follow 
a similar pattern. So I'm going to just try to do these. And then we'll put a couple more back there in the background. Then we'll do some lighter ones. There's all different, all different ones going all different directions here. Now there's got to be other jellyfish somewhere that are just not seen that are some of these tentacles some belong of these tentacles. to. It's got, got to be. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of them. There are a couple of areas. Have 11 minutes. Well, I st there's still a half a million uh, tentacles to add. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clearly not going to add all of them, but uh, there's a lot. All right, let's have a little bit more variety over here. I think I've already got that color. Yeah. I love the ones that just kind of wiggle and don't really follow a pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. There are some like that. You know, they're like outliers. Uh, May Lou has an interesting comment, and I, I don't know if it's it's directed to us. It's not in all caps, but uh, I, I, I try to read comments that aren't in all caps, too, um, that are questions. So May Lou asks, easy to add a personal touch, draw the basic shape, and then use different colors. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Add a different colored background, also good. And then she goes on to say, would blue acrylic paint be okay? And I'm thinking since that followed background, you might mean like painting the ba a, a solid background with, with paint to begin with. Um, yeah, it would. I, I would. I would probably use oil pastels on an acrylic ground o over pastels because I feel like the oil pastels, they're a little stickier and they will, um, their marks hold on to and they make marks better, I feel like, on or across acrylic paint than, than gouache paint. Um, I'm sorry. They make better marks on acrylic than I feel like pastels would on acrylic. So you might try that. Yeah, and the the thing about the gouache is that the gouache is, it draws to a powdery consistency almost, just like the soft pastels. Yeah. That's why, that's... They look similar. Right. That's why the gouache and the pastels work so well together. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you could use gouache and colored pencils. It's kind of similar. Although the colored pencils are going to be noticed, it'll be more waxy. And the the the, pa the pastel is so soft, you know, it can um, it can cover the gouache without really cutting down into it. Yes, um, the acrylics, however, are you know that's plastic really, that tough so paint. it's going to have a completely different feel, um, and it's not going to be the same. So just be wary of that. Be aware of that. I shouldn't say wary. All right, this is a white. Just getting some of these Ooh, more like that, electric mm -hmm. areas in here. I'm guessing that just in some of these areas that the light is coming down and some areas are shadowed. I don't know how it I just don't know how this, all these colors happen, you know? Yeah. It kind of doesn't make sense, but it sure is cool. Magic of photography. I don't, it, it, I don't know if it's the magic of photography or, or the magic jellyfish. of nature. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Margaret tells us that uh, Wiki says there may be hundreds of tentacles. Also, tentacles up to, get this, 100 feet in length. Oh that my gosh. is crazy. So these these very likely could be the tentacles of this one jelly. Well, I'd say there's definitely more than 100 tentacles here. My mm. goodness. Um, CF asks, how do you keep the gouache from cracking? Have you ever had any of that? I, have, I haven't had gouache crack on me before but i would imagine that if you're experiencing cracking it's probably because one of two things uh one you're putting it on too heavy mm -hmm, that's what i was thinking um 
And uh, the other reason is maybe it's the quality of the gouache. So I, the brand could play a role in that too. But I have used inexpensive brands before. And again, I haven't had it ever crack. But I typically, most of the time, I use gouache in um, kind of with lighter applications. So they're a little bit more of a watery application. So I guess that might have I some influence it, on uh, it too. opaquely, but with as much water as I can get into it, and it still be opaque. And so it still goes down pretty thin. There's no real texture um, left in the paint from the brush that gives you an idea of how you know how thick that uh, I usually use it not like maybe oil or acrylic paint where it's there's some really distinct brush marks in there oh he means cracking in a jar or palette oh don't worry oh, about that yeah that doesn't matter just add more water you know <laughs> it dries out and it cracks because it's you know I'm um, thick but uh just uh, react, reanimate it, reactivate it with some water. Some artists um, like to keep their gouache and their watercolor in tubes, and some artists will buy brand new tubes and squeeze it all out into a jar or on a palette, and um, and just use it in cake form, um, wetting it as they go. All right, Slippy Wheels got back to us and has sent an email to the support. Thing on the website. Thanks, <laughs> right. Well, I'll take a look at what's going on there and I'll help you out. That's happened to, to people before and usually it's because they're, they're just posting things too fast and the system thinks, hey, wait a minute, this is, yeah. a, this is a machine. Thinks you must be a robot. You are yeah. so efficient. No one types that fast. <laughs> All right, just a little bit of more blue here, just to kind of encourage a little bit more of a look of transparency. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it does feel hollow. I mean, it feels like I'm seeing through, um, through something, and, and seeing that orange patch that you started with inside of there. I guess because it's nice and soft around there, soft around the orange patch of color. Of course, with more time, you could really take this to a super high level if you wanted to. But I kind of like the the looser painterly look. Well, I think that's it, there. you know, I can't remember. Let's see who it was. Somebody had a comment, and I didn't read it, but it was a comparison between this jellyfish and the one that you just recently finished. Oh, uh, extremely the different. Instructor. Yeah, very, very different. Um, this one's been done so far in just 40 minutes, and I think you worked on that one for seven or eight hours. Yeah, it's about five hours because I don't hours. think we did any homework for okay, that. Okay, that's all. right. Yeah, that's right. So, really big difference in terms of approach. Um, but this one's, uh, you know, um, may be a favorite out there. So, it's, it's, yeah, it's some partly because the color probably the color is very attractive, but it's also just got it's so electric. Yeah, it's electric. Woogie, woogie, woogie. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Some people are going to be drawn to this kind of uh, art a little bit more than others. My my wife likes this kind of stuff. She's into the fresh marks. She likes fresh marks, loose marks. Yeah. Um, but that's not how she draws, ironically. Maybe that's why she's attracted to it. But you know, she has. I haven't seen her draw in so long. She used to do renderings, you know, but mm -hmm. she hasn't had to do that in many years. So. She doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I'm about ready to call this one finished. Even though maybe coming in. There's a little the bit clock. of little bit of time on the clock still. Um Pat Ster, uh Pat Sterlingsium says those tentacles look like split ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's probably what the jellyfish is thinking. With its massive brain up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's massive nothingness. Just floats around, just bumps into our legs, attacks us, has no idea. You know, I would tell my daughter all the time when she was a teenager, my oldest daughter, that, you know, when she would make silly mistakes, I would tell her that she was suffering from the teenage mush brain. And it's just, <laughs> it's something that happens to teenagers. They can't help it. They just, their brain goes to mush sometimes. Yeah. 
Um, and you know, the jellyfish literally has a mush brain. It looks like <laughs> that's true. It's a, it's, it's a teenager forever. This is a little bit of brown here just to get, uh, there's a little bit of value change in this little area down here. Maybe just mm -hmm. a little bit more contrast there, make it look a little bit more interesting. Yeah, I like that. It's a good choice. All right. Sometimes, you know, art d dictates something different than the reference and that's okay. Now I'm looking in here for my eraser and I can't find, oh, there it is. I'm just gonna clean up. There's a couple of areas where the pastel kind of is just moving around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit with this vinyl eraser. This has been a nice media combination, and it's a combination I've never used together before. It was a. Uh, well, I thank was, you. I think it was valuable for me to watch. I hope everybody else out there got something from it as well. Yeah, me too. All right, just a few more, a few more highlights. <laughs> um, you know, you can keep going and keep going and keep going. Sometimes well, it feels like an image like this. E oh God, yeah. But you got at some point you got to figure out where you're going to stop. Well, you're developing a little collection now of jellyfish. Well, I you know I really like sea creatures. Mm -hmm. I, I really think they're cool. You know, they sure are. I've got a drawing of a shark, a couple of crabs. Yeah, I like that shark uh -huh. you did with the marker and color pencil. With the mixed media, yeah, yeah. that yeah. was a good one. Um, that had that one had like white ink in it uh all very i mean it's media. all kinds of stuff there's graphite mm -hmm. um, uh, ink that has been applied with a brush i mean that that was like serious mixed media <laughs> Pulling out. Pulling it was out like whatever you could find laying around there all right i just want to bring a little bit more just a few more marks over here all right i think that's it with six seconds left, anyway. Six seconds to spare. Morgan One Howard second. says, hey, love your channel, and this looks amazing. Ah, thank you. I'm going to have to agree. Looks thank you, great. guys. Uh, yeah, there's more tentacles, obviously. We could keep adding those tentacles. Um, but I do want to just explain real quick the reason why I decided to move this guy down a little bit mm -hmm. instead of putting it right in the center. And that's because uh, if we put it right in the center, that kind of leads to more of a static composition. And this image right here, this subject, is just so vibrant and filled with movement. I mean, it feels like it's moving. I probably could have captured the movement a little bit more, but I, I didn't want to put it right in the center. I didn't want a static composition. So it's close to the center, but it's a little bit further down in the lower right-hand corner, and that allows for a little bit more negative space at the top, which helps yeah, to balance the piece a little that. bit, make mm -hmm. the composition a little bit more interesting on its own. Now, obviously, this is definitely a looser drawing. In fact, I want to zoom in a little bit closer so you can just see how loose it is. Um, it almost feels abstract a little bit. You know, when you were working on it, I was thinking that I actually turned my head to look at it sideways just to see if it would work as an as a abstract composition out mm -hmm. of context. And I, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and it, this is, I think this is a good example um, of how when we're drawing or painting things representationally, a lot of times we we are looking at the abstract things and uh, we're just replicating the abstract things. We see the That's world true. in really an abstract way. We we're, see it. We're, 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 we're forgetting it's a jellyfish and trying to look at just shapes of color and shapes of value. And that's a very abstract way to think. And we, when you would reassemble it, other people see things in it. Right. Like jellyfish. And, yeah. That's how we see the world uh, anyway. And it's our, our brains that make sense of what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and when we create a drawing or painting, of course, we're creating an illusion. We have to think about how we actually see things and not how our brains process things because they're different. Uh, but anyway, that's a good example of that. And uh, I really enjoyed this one. Um, but it now it's time. First, it was a great first or kickoff drawing for a new series. Oh, well, thanks. Season. And we did have a couple. I know we've got to spin the wheel. We've got to spin the we, wheel. We did yeah. have a question. Um, May Lou asked, 
Uh, she just recently bought a Tombow eraser from Michaels and wondered if she can use it with pastel. Yes. Isn't that what you were using? I just used a Tombow, okay. Tombow eraser. So with that's pastel. what Matt was using, the Tombow, to kind of clean up his pastel, stray pastel marks a little bit. So you can, and it'll give you a little bit of precision in your erasing also. All Pat right. Matt says your image looks um, like an excited jellyfish. Uh, love it. And Hoot and Holler says, glad the new <laughs> season has begun. Great start. Thanks, Matt and Ashley. Uh, thank you, guys. All right. Now it is time to spin the wheel. Ooh. So I'm what am going to do next week. I'm, I'm going to move nervous. this stuff out of the way. Actually, it's two wheels we're going to spin. I feel like I'm out of control. I'm going to try to very carefully <laughs> move this stuff out of the way. I got all kinds of stuff. Oh, one pastel just rolled off. Are we going to have more? Nope. All right. All right. So here are two wheels here. Obviously, mm -hmm. we got the, the medium over here. <laughs> And uh, we got the subject matter over here. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you, would you rather um, me spin them at the same time? No, let's or one stretch at a time? it out. Let's stretch it out. All right. One at a time. We'll start with a the medium then. Right, let's start with the, start with the medium. Now, this is what Ashley's going to have to do next week for getting sketchy. Have to so uh, one of these or mixed media and uh, mixed media can come from any media, not just the media on the wheel. Right, right, right. Um, all right, this is so so fun. I want to want to spin it more than one time. Okay, good spin. Come on, no whammies, no whammies. <laughs> all right, and the medium is going to be graphite. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm rooting for graphite for myself for every week. All right, so Ashley's gonna be working with. Graphite pencils, All right. or maybe powdered graphite. Who knows? Probably not. Now, right. with it being graphite, I'm yep. willing to say anything on this side, brick even brick vehicles brick or people. Okay, but before you weren't are, willing. No, no, the vehicles is going to be challenging with certain media. I think. Well, there's you know there's boats. Well, that's true. Boats are right. vehicles. I'm, I'm only thinking of cars because I'm yeah. You know, I don't. I'm not very creative, and Matt's got a picture for car on the screen. So a I'm skateboard is a vehicle. That's true. Yeah, that's it could be something simple. Okay. You know, all right. Um, well, I'm I'm going for vehicles. Oh, you are going. Yeah. For, okay. Let's see what happens here. All right. No whammies. No whammies. Spin. No whammies. No whammies. Spin. Landscape. Landscape. A graphic All right. landscape. All right. So Ashley will be working. Mm. All right. Let me write this down. With uh, landscape next landscape. week. And you know that's um that's a subject that I don't do often, and getting on getting sketchy. So. And I'm glad I, got, <laughs> I'm glad I got a comfortable media and a less comfortable subject uh, for myself. Just speaking for myself. Slippy Will said F1 car. That's what I was gonna do. All right. Well, maybe later in the season. Maybe later in the season we'll get an F1 car out of out of this uh, out of this summer of uh, summer of fun. Summer of the wheel. Summer of the wheel. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh that's going to do it for us tonight so we're going to head over to the virtual instructor.com and ashley is going to actually start adding the paint to his gouache painting mm -hmm. tonight yeah so just made a drawing last week so we're going to start painting this week and um we're doing it we're actually doing a still life of art supplies so something that's near and dear to mine and all of our hearts i think now, of course, you have to be a member to access our live lesson series. Um, but if you are a member, you have access to all of our live lesson series that uh, we've ever done. And I've been doing the live lessons since 2012. So there's a lot for you to explore. And then also the courses, weekly critiques. There's so much. There's so much content that's part of the membership program that um, I don't really think that you could go through it all. Yeah, that's I, five, I really don't. That's over 500 videos of just live lesson content. Of just live just lesson live content. Just live lesson content. Yeah. 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 And that doesn't include the courses, the, you can get the members' through, minutes. If you can get through all of that content, you're not, you're, not, <clears throat> you're not eating. You should do some other things. I mean, that is 24 hours a day. I don't, I don't think it's possible, actually. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, you guys have a wonderful week. Yep. Um, we, we look forward to seeing you right here next week. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Good night, everybody. <laughs>